Morning all, uh, welcome. And so news of the day time and some stuff still coming out. So while I was in the midst of a news of the day, uh, one more signing was announced. So I'm like, oh, I can just tack it onto this one. And here we go. So uh, Mike Doc Emmerich has announced his retirement. How long was Doc Emmerich calling games? Well, he called 3,750 plus, and that's professional and Olympics. Um, had been broadcasting since 1973. So that's a long time to have the same job. And when you're when you're broadcasting for 47 years, it's funny because, you know, I've heard people complain that Doc might seem disinterested at times and he might miss this name and miss that. And it's like, I can't think of very many jobs that you would do for 3,750 plus days that you wouldn't have an off day. So I always was more forgiving of Doc than maybe some others. And during these past playoffs, it did kind of feel like maybe that would end up being the last playoffs for him. It just seemed to be something a little different. And so he's made it official. He's 74 years of age. We're in the midst of a pandemic. And odds are, I don't know that that played into it. I know it causes a lot of people to have some reflection this year where they otherwise normally wouldn't. Uh, but, you know, it, it is it is sometimes the right time to go. And he's made that decision. And when you think about how long he's been in the game, we'll put it this way. Uh, when he started calling games professionally... I was a baby. So that's how long, that's how long it's been that he's been, and that's a, that's a really long time. So, uh, yeah, uh, totally understandable. And, you know, calling hockey games is not easy. Uh, it is it is a very difficult job that they have. Play-by-play um, -play announcers have nothing but respect for me because it is, it is a tough job. And it, it takes a lot of practice. It takes a lot of work. And when guys are learning it, you can kind of see the, oh, this is this is not easy. And then, again, you've got people that will jump on them as soon as they get a name wrong. I can't believe he, he said this guy's name when he's 86. And the guy he thought it was was 84. And I don't know what he's thinking. And, you know, for the guy in the booth, he's got to be on it, like, fast. So, uh, totally understandable these guys make mistakes here and there. And for Doc Emmerich, he'll be missed. Um likely the voice of hockey in the United States, I would think, went into the American uh, U.S. Hockey Hall of Fame. Um, and and really, for the States, he's been what Bob Cole was in Canada. And who is it now? John Forsland, I would think, on the American side of the border, and Chris Cuthbert on the Canadian side. I don't know that we can get an agreement on the Canadian side in terms of who the, the voice is for Canada, but I'll say Cuthbert. Sure. Why not Chris Cuthbert? I mean, I would say Jim Hewson, but then the comment section would just be, be awful. Anyways, um, all the best to Doc Emmerich. Enjoy retirement, and you've earned it. You've absolutely earned it. Uh, Vitaly Kravtsov, remember when he got off to that really good start in the KHL? Well, he's still off to that good start, but now with an injury thrown in. He's missed the last six games with an undisclosed injury. So the KHL, learning from the NHL, is kind of, we just won't talk about injuries anymore. And uh, yeah, so Kravtsov's been out for a while. Six games would normally meet about two weeks of action, when you consider hockey schedules as they are. And so hopefully he's okay. I'm sure that as soon as he got hurt, uh, the New York Rangers were in contact with the KHL, with the agent, and with the player. I would think that's, uh, that's immediate when any player gets hurt overseas, that the general manager is on the phone right away maybe even the coach is on the phone right away because you want to make sure that your asset is is protected overseas uh so yeah hopefully Kravtsov's okay and it's nothing major josh anderson so i'm using the columbus logo for josh anderson because this is related to the columbus side of things he wanted eight years from columbus columbus said no the other option was one year if they'd given him a one-year contract he would have been an unrestricted free agent in 2021 well, Jarmo Kekalainen's been down that road before. He has watched a lot of players leave this team. And so the, the decision to trade Josh Anderson, to me, is a no-brainer. Uh, an eight-year contract is just too much. The fact that Anderson gets a seven-year deal from Montreal, kudos to him for getting a long-term contract when most players are taking one or two years. And, uh, you know, at most it seems to be four in most cases. So he ends up getting a very, very long-term contract. 
and uh, you know he gets himself the financial security, but Columbus felt it was too rich for their blood. And eight-year contracts, I, I think they're 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 baffling. I think they're just too long. Honest opinion, I think they're too long. I think there's too much that can happen in a guy's career in eight years, and it, it's far too likely that contract is going to be. Um, a, a bad idea in eight years. Seven, seven is risky too. And I've said for years, and I'll say it again here, I think four years is perfect for the team and for the player. If the player believes he's still going to be an elite player in four years, it's not a big deal. And for the team, they get four years of of, uh, of relative quiet when it comes to any concern about that player leaving, anything like that. Uh, and, and then it's a contract that if, if it does go south, it's not that hard to get rid of it. So, yeah, uh, Anderson gets his seven years with Montreal. Uh, Tyson Jost agreed yesterday to this, and I thought, well, I could make a long video about Tyson Jost. I didn't. $874,000. You know, for one year, that's not a bad living for most of us. And for the other, uh, Jost has shown flashes during this run with, with Colorado over the last couple of years. And, and it's just, it's sort of like Sam Bennett and Calgary to me, where it's like, if he ever puts it all together, if he ever has a season where magically it all clicks, he's going to be fantastic. And and I think Bennett could have that year this year for, for Calgary. We'll see whether or not uh, Jost ever has that season for Colorado. I've suggested in the past that it might be in the best interest of the player and the team um, for him to maybe be traded at some point. But hasn't happened yet. He's staying for another year. And if they decide to move him, that $864,000 contract will be easy to move. So we'll see what happens with Jost and, and how that goes from here. Now, I also wanted to address, so there's players from the NHL that are currently playing in the Swedish League, in the SHL. And people have been saying, you know, Shannon, you talk about these guys come back to the NHL, but if they're in the SHL, they're there to the end of the season. Yep. And the SHL season ends in March. The NHL is not going to start playing until January. And now there's all this, oh, they're not going to play till February. Right. So it means they may not start the season in the NHL, but they'll be in the NHL for the end of the year. And I, I really don't think that's going to affect where NHL teams send players, depending on the player, depending on the circumstance. So if it's a younger player, they're better off getting that time in the SHL. Yep, they missed the start of the season in the NHL, but it might be in their best interests. And once the SHL season's over, then they come over. And that's that's going to be the planning. Now they'll they'll more likely go to guy, go to leagues like Liga KHL. I believe they have outs from there, uh, German league and whatnot. But again, for the players who who are in the SHL and for people who say, well, they can't play in the NHL in a normal regular season, sure. But this is not a normal regular season. There's nothing normal about the regular season this year. So uh, I think players will still either be allowed to come back to the NHL or it's not going to matter because the season will end in the SHL before the NHL anyways. So it's just one of those wide open, we just don't know what's going to happen things. And just announced Christian Fisher has officially signed a two-year extension with Arizona. I've not seen the term yet. I would think it won't be that much money because let's be honest, it's a new general manager. Uh, the the one thing with John Chaka was he used he was giving out I thought the the term and the money that you would give to a star or a semi star player before they had actually performed at that level and in some cases the risk appeared pretty good but uh, I know I I didn't like the Clayton Keller contract when it was signed and I don't know how well that contract's aging either so. We'll see. It's only a two-year deal, so it's not going to be overly cumbersome. And they don't have any cap space, so it can't be for that much. Uh, but we'll see. Uh, we'll see if things change in Arizona. and We'll see if some of those longer contracts, if there's a team in the league that wants one of those longer-term contracts. Because uh, Arizona was paying in advance. And the idea of, okay, this, t this player's trending in this direction. We'll pay him at this amount. And two years from now, this deal is going to look like a huge steal. Because he's gonna he's gonna continue. The thing is, not all players do that. Some players, it's it's a little bit more bumpy, and some of them they they start and then they just right off right off the cliff, um, and and it can get kind of kind of um, ugly quickly with some of the younger players when it just the development just hits a wall. 
And at some point during the offseason, I'll, I'll do a video on that, on how there are players who've looked very good early in their career, and then they've just hit a wall and it's fallen apart for them. Because why not talk about something that's really uplifting during 2020, right? Anyways, so there you go. Yeah, I'm wearing a Quebec hat and I'm wearing my THG hoodie because it was chilly in here when I came in this morning and started up the board. So I thought, well, I'll throw on the sweatshirt. Why not? And uh, and prove that I, I do buy the product from, from uh, uh, Teesprings. So there you go. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below as always. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. Thank you guys so much for watching, for all your support. And uh, it was weird last night uh, reviewing a baseball game and, and trying to review it in as much detail as possible. But it sort of felt um, familiar. It, it sort of feels like my natural habitat now is, is writing notes on and reviewing sports. So, yeah, it's where we're at. Because there's no hockey right now, I'm reviewing baseball. And I'll be doing that during the World Series as well. And, of course, watching football here and there too. Because you always got to see how the Bengals are going to blow it. How uh, they can get a big lead and you go, ah, you got a big lead. And instead of, you know, some fans will get all cocky, you know, look, we're great. My my response is always, hey, look, we're up by, what, 20 points? How are we going to blow this one? And then they do. They never let me down. All right. Thank you guys so much for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.